Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Sylvia Annette, who also goes by Annette Thomas from Core 4 Consulting, and she is a college success coach. For over a decade, Annette has worked with hundreds of families by guiding them through the application, admissions, and enrollment process while helping them navigate what it takes to become a successful college graduate. And prior to meeting Annette, I had no idea that people were not staying in college once they got there. But Annette is going to share all of that with us, as well as how she got her start, what she studied in college, and we'll just go all the way. So Annette, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So what did you study in college and why? Yeah, so I am from California. I went to school in, in Napa, California um, for my first year and then studied a year abroad. I'm one of those unique cases that... I chose a major and I actually stuck with it through my four years. You know, statistically, students change their major, I, I mean, a lot of times. <laughs> and so um, I chose communication. I stuck with it. I ended up doing communication management in Spanish for translation. I studied a year abroad in Argentina. So it was the Spanish aspect. And then um, I continued on to do my master's of leadership. Um, several years later. So yeah, um, basically communication and leadership. And then what did you think you would do with that when you graduated? Great question. So initially, I thought I was going to do, um, I wanted to direct news. And I had a professor in college who told me, hey, just so you know, this is what your hours would look like. This is what your day to day quality of life would actually be. Um, if you ever want a family or to have kids, this is something that you need to keep in mind when committing to something in news because you're you can be there from 2 a.m. until you know, whenever the story ends. And so I thought about it. I decided, okay, I'm going to try healthcare administration, ended up getting a job in Ohio um, at a health network. And it was an internship and they ended up extending me a position. And I just knew in my gut, it wasn't for me. Like healthcare administration is a great field, but it just wasn't, didn't feel right. So was it about that field that you didn't care for? Yeah, I loved the people. I just didn't see an end goal. So I didn't see some a position that I would say, wow, I would really like to be them or I really love what they do in a day to day. And because I didn't see that I didn't have that around me. I knew what's the point of kind of starting here if there's not an end job that I have in mind that I'd want to work for. Interesting. So what happened to that? Exactly. So after that, I actually was walking to class one day and I thought it'd be really cool to recruit students to my university. Like I really love college and I want to help people come to college. And I thought I was kind of making it up. Like I didn't know that the position actually existed. And so I walked into the enrollment office and I just told them, hey, I'd love to recruit for your school or for our school. And they told me, well, there's not a position available right now, but if something opens up, we'll let you know. And so anyway, something ended up opening up. So at that time, it was the same time that I was working in Ohio. So I had the decision to make, do I want to continue with healthcare administration or do I want to try, you know, recruitment? And so I, I chose recruitment. I ended up doing that for three years. I, um, traveled to 17 different states recruiting students from all around the country um, to our university. And then after that, I ended up getting a position with Grand Canyon University in Arizona, but it was remote in here in California. And so anyways, it was a decade worth of admissions and it was great. Um, However, I realized that students were focused so much on where they were going to go to school. Um, the names, the sweatshirt they were going to have on their shirt, you know, or the name of the sweatshirt or the school on the sweatshirt, I guess, um, that I just felt like there's something missing. You know, you go from, and I'm, I have a two-year-old and I've, I've taken courses on sleep training and I'm reading a book on potty training and there's literally information for new parents, so much information not a lot of support for parents after that. And so 
I found that the things that are available to families are either boring or I don't know, they just don't look nice or there's, or there's not a lot. And so anyways, that's where I've been transitioning from admissions and recruitment. Um, in that process, I did a lot of advising. So helping students find their classes, which funny enough is in college, my friends would always come to me so that I can make their class schedule. So something that is in me. Yeah, you're born <laughs> uh, to do this. Exactly. It's just in me. I was born with it. So it's just interesting to see as an adult, what are the things that were always in you that you didn't know would play a part in your career? Right. You know, it's just cool. It's cool to see um, that transition, the, the transformation for sure. So let's talk about when you were doing the admissions for the universities, can you share a little bit about if someone wanted to go into that profession, you know, what is the day to day like? What are the pitfalls? What do people never tell you about that job? Those kinds of things. Yeah, of course. So I think it's a great um, entry position out of college because you can sell your university. And it's actually very sought after. A lot of students want to work for their university. Uh, many universities offer you know, benefits to pay for their education. And so that's what happened with me is I got my master's paid for because I worked for the university. Oh, cool. And so um, a day to day would be depending on most positions right now are remote. So you can live in your territory. So for example, a recruiter for Oregon can live here in Southern California, recruiting students from Southern California. And you would have a territory of, you know, a certain area. So depending on how big the school is, you can have, um, you know, states worth of recruitment or just your city. So for my first position, um, it was Andrews University, which is my alma mater. Um, I had the 17 states, whereas when I worked for Grand Canyon, I had about less than 20 schools. And so I would go to those schools, I would really um, offer just value to their counseling staff and helping them prepare students for college. Um, there's a lot of communicating with the student with the parent. I think what's um, hard is that every school is different. So students don't know how do I communicate with this school versus this school. You know, some prefer they only communicate via portal. Others communicate via email or you can call them or you have their direct cell phone. Like students always had my direct cell phone number, whereas a lot of schools don't do that. Wow. Yeah, that's huge having your cell number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's taking service to another level. And so um, I think it's a great field for students to start out after college to learn. I mean, you learn so much about recruitment, about follow, follow up, about things that you would need or what you could use in any position. Um, you know, I've seen people go from college recruitment to, um, let's see, like HR, Others have gone to recruiting for large corporations, um, like college at, for college students. Um, other, you know, so you can go into other, a lot of people go into real estate or sales from there. Um, I've seen, you know, everything. And so it's nice to build those soft skills um, and to learn the follow up and how to, you know, I think recruiting is something that you can use or sales in any position. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I presume that the, does the person have to have gone to that college in order to be a recruiter for that college? No, no actually. So I have a previous student who um, just interviewed for a different university in the state that they wanted to live in. I see. Yeah. Good All question. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now today, let's talk about today. Today, what are you doing? Yeah. So because I saw admissions so much, um, I, or for so long, I knew that so well. And one thing is, is that I had my baby. And so I knew I wanted to work for myself. And I knew that I had a greater purpose in just serving students in a different way that others really haven't seen before. So when I tell people what I do, people always say like, what? 
you're, you're a college success coach, like what does that even mean? And so I'm sure we all have someone in our life that went to college and either dropped out or they took a really long time to finish or, and the thing is, is that there's no wrong way of doing college. You know, like, yes, ideal situation is to graduate within four years, get a job, you know, so forth, keep continue progressing through your life. But I think that everyone has a different path and it's not always so linear that students feel like they're failing if they didn't do things the traditional way. And so I focus on students learning to be successful in college, not just, so a lot of people ask me, so do you help write essays to get into college? And the answer is no, like I don't do admissions. And the reason is, is that there's already so many resources out there for college admissions. A lot of it is simply based on what your GPA is, what your extracurricular is, all of that information is out there and like readily available. However, what's not available is that students don't often, I shouldn't say all students, several students don't have the tools they need to be successful in college. Now, this doesn't just mean the slacker student. This I also put a great focus on this, the overachieving student. So for example, there's a girl um, I just spoke with yesterday and she was saying, she's my age, but she was saying, she's not a girl, she's a woman. <laughs> she was saying that in college, she really, she was an overachieving student and she really struggled with self. And the problem with overachieving students is they don't always know the line between how do I balance school and life they only know how to balance school and it can often be very overwhelming you know I see students wanting to get into law school and medical school and don't know how to still have a life like even myself in college and I think this is partially why I've created this is that in college I just went to school like I studied way more than I needed to study in college. (laughs) I didn't know how to balance social life. And I didn't realize how important that was for my well-being and how important it was for my networking and, you know, for me to build a network for jobs later. I only thought, oh, I just need to have a good GPA when I graduate. And that was my only focus, whereas a lot of students... Now it's like, there's things like we, I discussed time blocking and, or calendar blocking and scheduling time for things that they need that are non-negotiable in their life, working out, eating healthy. It's just a lot of like, no one teaches you that stuff. Like you just are thrown in and I'm the oldest of five. And so I was the responsible one. I just had to go out and figure it out. It's like, yeah, well, parents have to ride that fine line of teaching independence, but also teaching, like, we're still here to help you and support you, but we can't do it for you. And it's really hard to find that line. So anyways, that's why I started College Success Coaching. Um, It's been a fun experience. I've worked with Um, universities now to do contract work for programming for their students. And I think virtual, I mean, because of the pandemic, virtual coaching is just really taken off. And it's just a great time to still see students and get to interact with people face to face. I mean, even this, like getting to see you right now and talk, talk with you. So that's, that. hopefully that answers your question. (laughs) So So let me just get this straight. So a parent has a kid that's going to college and is it the kid that calls you? Is the parent that calls you or what, how does that work? Good question. So typically the parent, the student doesn't know they need me until it's too late. Okay. So it's a hundred percent, I'd say 98% that the parent, um, I have a parent Facebook group where I offer, you know, information for for parents on there. It's called preparing your student for college parent support. But that's one way that parents will connect with me to say, hey, this is what I'm saying. Um, What do you recommend or so forth? Um, And so it's mostly always the parent. The nice thing is, is that I relate to students as well. So once they 
once the parent has talked to the student, like, hey, you do need to talk to her, we end up building our own relationship. I mean, I have students from my very first year recruiting that I'm still friends with that are now, you know, doctors and dentists and lawyers that I'm still in their life. I've gone to their weddings. And so it's just, it's cool to see that progression, but it typically starts with the parent who says, okay, I want my student to be ahead of the curve. I want my student to know these things before it's too late because once they arrive to campus and they're bombarded with you know the parties the over stimulation of friends the constant like having to set boundaries they've never had to do that before and so if parents will know oftentimes because they had a student that was older and who either dropped out or you know a friend or family member that might have not done well their first year, but the parent will then reach out and say, okay, I'd like, you know, for you to work with our student. So the kid gets to know you, let's just say before college, right? And then it's the first day of college or it's, they're going to go sign up for classes and they're struggling because they don't understand. I mean, are you on speed dial or what's your relationship with the kids? Yeah, so it depends um, how, how the family wants to kind of set it up. I also set really good boundaries with families of like, I'm not your parent, I'm not your therapist either. I have resources for those, but at the same time, I'm here to build the tools. So this year, this summer in August, I'll be holding a college kickstart. And so it's a workshop for students entering college of, Hey, this, these are some things. And it's typically for students who are starting their freshman year. Um, however, I have had other families reach out and say, my student just finished their freshman year, but really struggled. Could they still join the workshop? even as a sophomore, because they didn't know those skills going in as a freshman. So it's it's a cool relationship, but we do a great job at kind of setting boundaries as well to put the responsibility on the student. Outstanding. Well, that's yeah, just yeah. great. I mean, in my day, there was no such thing as a college success student uh, counselor. You ever just either went to college and struggled or you did it, right? And so- Exactly. It's wonderful. Thank you. And it's just such a big investment. It's an investment of money, of course, but it's also an investment of time. And I think trying to maximize students' time while they're in school is just, I think my goal is to make sure that they have an enjoyable experience. Um, I've unfortunately seen, I mean, even from when I was in school, to students that I've either known myself or have had family friends or something that have either attempted suicide or while in school. And I think that's a really driving factor for me is that students feel very alone in this transition, you know, and they, they have their parents, but sometimes their parents are across the country. And so it's to have that additional support. Um, the whole reason why I called this core four is that I believe the student needs to have, it's the student, the parent, the institution and the support. Oh. And so I think having that core four will really set the student up to feel supported in school, but to yet also feel confident that they can do this on their own and give them that confidence to know, okay, it might be hard sometimes, you know, my husband, we dated in undergrad. And I remember several times he said, I don't know if I want to do engineering anymore. You know, it's like, we all have those doubts and it's someone to be there to support you. That sometimes is not your parent to say, Hey, this can be done. Like you can do this. And this is how you, these are the tools you you can use to get through those hard days because we all have them. I mean, you know, you have them, I have them, we all do. So the whole goal is for them to feel supported and learn those resources. Well, that's tremendous. Well, thank you for that. Well, how about this? Why don't you tell us if someone wants to reach out to you, how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, so my website is www.mycollegestrategist.com. Um, and then my parent Facebook group, it's, you know, free for everyone is um, preparing your student for college parent support dash parent support. Um, and then my email address is Annette, A-N with one N, E-T-T-E -T -T -E, at mycollegestrategist.com. Oh, fabulous. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. I think what you're doing is really wonderful for, thank you. for the world and for kids. They're so lucky the ones that get to work with you to know that there's somebody else out there that, and furthermore, you went to college probably more recently than their parents did. Exactly. And I, um, when I did work, you know, in the admission setting is we were full cycle, meaning we did their financial aid, we did their class scheduling. So I think it's a little bit different where I actually know like FAFSA and what those terms mean and those things that confuse students, you know, myself, I just signed on the dotted line because I knew I had to be financially cleared. I didn't know what any of those documents meant, all to find out oh, these are loan documents, you have to pay them back. What does it mean? Like, no one explains that stuff to you. And if your parents either didn't go to college or like you said, they went several years ago and things have changed, it becomes very overwhelming and can, you know, often put a strain on the family. So hope this yeah. alleviates that. <laughs> the parent doesn't want to seem like an idiot either to their kid. Of course. <laughs> and like, you want to focus on the happy times, you know, prom graduation, stuff like that, not necessarily arguing about college stuff. Absolutely. All right. Well, I wish you the very best, Annette. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Love what you're doing here. Thank you so much. Well, take good care and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.